Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gnostic Media's podcast, Unspun episode number, what is this, 91? So we have Clint Richardson with us again. Thanks, Clint, for coming back. Thanks, everybody who donated over the last week and supported the show. I really appreciate it. We're going live for a few minutes early here, so instead of just having this wonderful conversation to ourselves, we would... You know, we thought we'd share it with all of you, get going a couple of minutes early. So here we are. We're going to be discussing, well, it's not really a taboo subject, but it's just, you know, it's there's such smoke screens, et cetera, around it that it has become a, a, a taboo subject, I guess. But, I, you know, we're, Clint and I and some of the others around here are pretty good at discussing taboo subjects so uh you know today's today's show will be no exception and uh so clint welcome back to the show so what what uh what can the audience expect tonight well we're gonna be we're really gonna be speaking about um i I say in my one of the first things i say in my book as a disclaimer is look if you're gonna read this thing you're gonna realize it's a it's an equal opportunity offender in other words, whatever title you think you hold, whatever you know, person you you pretend to be, whatever whatever thing you say that you are that is not real, um, we're going to expose as being a falsity, you know, something that's not of nature, something that's man-made, and it's very important to do that uh, in order to you know have that kind of ego death because of course the ego supports the false identity and. What we're talking about is something called identity politics. We don't have anything else but really identity politics, right? I'm a Jew, I'm an American, I'm white, I'm black, I'm this, I'm that. You know, I'm I'm something I'm not. And I'm not white. What, what the hell is white? What is black? There's no, I don't know any black, you know. <laughs> black is without blood or without black cons- you know that's that's what those words really mean if i'm a white person in the in the united states well then i i am considered someone that is recognized as having blood royal blood and if i'm black or negro that means the bl- the blood is tainted right that's that's the true meaning of these things because again the law only sees two different aspects those with blood and those without and this is how, of course, all of our inheritance was stolen from us because we're we're pretending to be something we're not. We're persons of the United States instead of men, um, w- which the law would recognize as 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 our our bloodline, w- which again goes back to bearing arms. You know, we bear the bear our family arms, which which is what the Second Amendment is all about, in truth. Because if I have the right to bear my family arms, my privacy, my blood. Well, then the law protects my right to use guns to, to protect my people, my family, my, my fellow state citizens, private citizens. So, you know, all these things have been so utterly confused in our minds that we actually think, for instance, that the right to bear arms means guns. And you got to go deeper than that. To, you know, what, what, what gives you the right in the first place? Because it's, it's your natural right to defend yourself, right? So if you're taking such rights... From, it's automatically natural law to defend yourself. Right. So if you're taking that right from a government, well, then that means the government has the right to take it away, right? So unfortunately, by getting you to accept this notion that your right to bear arms is one, guns, and two, you need a license, you know, and... And, and three, uh, permission from mommy and daddy government rather than right. inherent in natural law and just the state of life and defending yourself. Right, and so the importance of that, of course, why, why does the Second Amend- Amendment say it's the importance of a militia is so important? And that's because the militia was not an army. It was not a standing army. It was a bunch of local people who defended, again, their family, their friends, their neighborhood, their state from the tyranny of standing armies and standing governments. That's the purpose of having that right to bear your family arms, your your heraldry, your coat of arms, etc., etc., etc. And this great, great misunderstanding is the reason that none of us have any clue how this country works, right? This country works, again, by recognizing private people and their blood, their family, which, which the Constitution calls the posterity in the preamble, 
So we're creating this thing, this this states united. We're creating this compact, this constitution for us and our posterity. Well, that's not everybody. That's not all men, right? All men are created equal in nature. Okay, it's very important to distinguish that from all persons are equal under the eyes of the law or however that works. Those, these are two different things, and you always have to distinguish between the the identity, the person, the persona, the mask, the the reputation, you know, all these 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 things of no substance with the actual man and and what and who who the man is, the blood, in other words. So we in, in fact, you know, let's start off with that because when we're talking about identity and identity politics, Again, you're talking about nation versus nation. What is a nation but a, basically a group of people who believe that they have some connection, uh, whatever their particular history is, right? Whatever their his, whatever the victor's story of their history is, a lawmaker's history, well, that's what you follow, right? We have, we have our own set of gods called the Founding Fathers, right? Who were all Freemasons, nobody seems to want to acknowledge that um and uh and and that's our history we 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 have a a completely quote-unquote godless um religionless state meaning has no spiritual or moral law um that it recognizes in its actual functionality um meanwhile it recognizes the higher law as something higher than it for those who reserve their rights. So you, you have private people who reserve their rights, reserve their right to bear their family crest, their family arms, their blood. And then you have all of us who are just, you know, out here in sort of La La Land. And why, why this is so important, <laughs> okay, you go again, you go back to the Bible. Oh, here we are again. Here we are again at the Bible. Well, again, I'm telling you the Bible like you've never read it before, right? I'm pulling these things. I should have put this in my first book. Um, uh, you know, I'm going to just go, I'm going to type in, uh, I'm going to type in my second book here that I'm working on, Respect of Persons. Okay, now remember, a person is not a man. A person is what belongs to man. It's, it's something that is your reputation, your numbers, your paper contracts, everything. Your, that, your person, paper, and effects. Your, your, your status. is the, the, the most correct term would be status, uh, according to the, the great you know dictionaries of the time. Um, status would be your status in society, your persona, your mask that you wear while you're doing stuff. So when you go and you define that term – as it is in the concordances and the lexicons, well, then we come to uh, a lot of a lot of words that mean the same thing. Face, right? It's always talking about uh, looking at something something prima facie or on the face of it, and you can you can judge somebody by the 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 way their face, um, you know, makes uh, emotionalizes emoticons that kind of thing. So you're you're looking at the word face and the word person are very, again, mask are very similar uh, words, continence, uh, countenance, excuse me, the way you carry yourself, right? You might, you might say, well, look at him. He's, he looks confident or he's strong or he's weak or he's, he's rich. He's poor. These are all status. These are all persons, personas that we, 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 we judge people by, right? We judge people on the face of something. When, when in fact, we should ex be expressing the same quote-unquote natural equality to all men. I would never judge you based on, I would never invite you over to my home, for instance, because you're wealthy and I want to be seen in your countenance or seen next to you. I would invite the, the poor man uh, quicker than I would invite the wealthy man because the poor man, no man should be wealthy before um, uh, before all others are, right? So no man should have wealth until all others have wealth is part of that quote-unquote natural law or law of God. So it's important to pick out this 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 concept, this persona, this person as the, as identity. And when we when we look 
again at the definition. I know I had it up here. I probably I go crazy with this thing, always losing what, what I intend to what I intend to do with yeah, it. Yeah, my browser just crashed through all the windows I had open. <laughs> face, face, person, presence, countenance, etc., uh, etc. Et um, can mean, of course, the literal, but it also means the metaphoric, which is the the outward appearance of, of inanimate things, the appearance one presents by his wealth or property, his rank or low condition, his outward circumstances, ex external condition, something that is not you. And none of this has anything to do with you in reality. This is all stuff that comes from the state, right? And the state defines what a white person is. So Barack Obama, for instance, is defined legally as a white person because his blood is recognized as being of the white families that were talked about in the constitutions and the, the founding documents. So Obama was a president because he's part of the bloodline. It's that simple. You don't have to go any farther with the white or the black. There is no real racism. Race is another construct of men. It's, it's a division. It's a class. Um, and this is why they say in the Bible, everybody can share in the figurative, metaphoric, allegoric blood of Christ, which means share in the law, should treat everybody equally in nature, right? As, as, as natural beings without the persona, without the face, without the prima facie uh, appearance, the countenance, the look, the, the wealth, the property, the rank, or, or for that matter, the low condition, the poverty, um, don't judge a man by these things is basically what it says. So uh, using expressions which denote, which denote regard, the, which regard the person in one's judgment and treatment of men. So you notice that it's, it's even here, it's distinguishing between the person and the men. I'm judging you, Jan, by your persona that you present on air, not by who you actually are. So I'm judging your person, not, not the man. Right. Right. I know nothing about you, although I've met you personally, so I can't say that about you. Most people out there will judge by the, the on the face of things, the persona, the mask that people wear. And in this day and age, it's, it's of course, very prevalent because, <laughs> I mean, count the count the number of friends you have in real life anymore compared to the ones you have online. Right. It's, it's getting kind of it's getting kind of nuts. <laughs> it's, getting, it's getting to the point where if you ever saw the movie Wall-E, you know, we're all floating around computerized and we're talking to each other on the phone while we're sitting across from each other at, at breakfast or something, you know. Um, so I, I'm only knowing the persona of men. So now we go to the Bible, right? Again, this is identity. This is the identity that I, that I put upon you. So now... Over and over throughout the Bible, it tells you, and this is this is what I'm trying to get across to people: is that the Bible is law, it's not religion. It's 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 the way that we are to treat each other, in you know, in the in the in the quote unquote natural realm or the the, the natural right, natural law, which again means no fictions, no artifice, no person, no flattering titles, no this. So let me just read you some of these because these are these are all throughout the Bible. Right, and these don't make any other sense unless you're applying them to the legal realm. What is the legal realm? Legal realm doesn't exist without persons, places, jurisdictions, and things, property. That's what the legal realm is. It is all the artificial things, all these terms that we, we put on things. And so I'm just going to blow through these real quick. Uh, in Peter, uh, 1 Peter 1, 17 through 18. And if he call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judges according to every man's work, pass your time, and uh, you're sojourning here in fear. Fear is, is a term, you know, <laughs> what we say to fear God. Well, that, that means nothing more and nothing less. To give you an example, if, if I'm walking along a cliff, I'm hiking, and there is no railing. There's nothing for me to hang on to. I'm not going to hop and skip uh, on that path. I'm going to be very careful putting my back against the wall, because if I fall, the forces of nature are going to kill me. All right? That is fear of God, right? That is a healthy fear of nature, right? So 
we're <laughs> you, you you don't have to be afraid of the word fear the reason they you know you fear for instance a gangster who approaches you with a gun and you say, and says give me your money what are you gonna do you know you're gonna fight back if you don't have a gun or you don't have anything to fight back with you're gonna fear and you're gonna obey the law of fear and you're gonna give them your money in this case the word fear is actually a good thing because you're fearing the laws of you, you you're fearing what will happen if you don't follow the laws of nature in other words um fear what's going to happen if you pollute your drinking water right that, that makes sense that's that's fear of god fear of what is part of jehovah all that is in existence right all nature so uh if you if you pray or if you call on god in other words uh, do so uh, or excuse me it <laughs> As the, as the story goes, you go to the pearly gates, you face God. Well, God respects no persons. Whatever actions you did in your life, you cannot say, well, you know, at the time I had a license to kill, so it was okay. I was a soldier. I was an assassin. I worked for the government. I worked for the CIA, so it was okay that I did all these crimes. I had a license. I, a license is a, a term that means anarchy or lawlessness. I had license to do these things. Because I, I, I was a, a person of the government. I had a flattering title of soldier or general or police officer or anything at all that says you have the right to suddenly it's okay to kill or go against the, the natural law, right? So when God judges you, as the, as the allegory goes, God judges you without respect of any person. So... Whatever flattering title, whatever thing that you call yourself, your actions are your own. This is a very basic lesson. You, it's, it's one of those undeniable truths that you cannot simply put your own actions upon a fictional fucking character. I'm a police officer. I can do whatever the hell I want. No, actually, that's, that's anarchy towards the next That's, that's the person. Exactly, and that's why he says God respects. You know, the you know it's like if, if people, you know, it, it's the perfect time of year because uh, a week from tonight is Halloween, and it's also the ninth anniversary of the show. But um, <clears throat> congrats! Everybody is going to be going around wearing avatars or personas on Halloween, and so you know you aren't the. The costume, you know, you know, if people can wrap their minds around, you know, just because you put on the, you know, the John Podesta costume or whatever for Halloween or, or whatever you you decide to wear, it doesn't mean you're John Podesta or whatever. The bad analogy, I was trying to be funny with. Well, that, uh, let's, see, let's take going to, uh, did you ever go to a, a, a week for like go away for camping, like a children's camp or a church camp or anything like that, you go, you know, you have the opportunity to be whoever the hell you want. You know, you'd be yourself or you can pretend that you're way cooler than you are <laughs> around your social group at school or whatever. You have a great time. You meet some great friends. You pretend like you're going to be friends your whole lives. Then you realize, okay, I got to go back to my routine, my real life, as they call it. The artificial life is the real life. And yeah everything goes back to normal and you're back to your social conditioning and your quote-unquote identity your reputation that you've built as a as a high school student or we, we just gotta be careful not to be directing people to things like burning man which are set up as a big trap to capture that wanted autonomy and and sovereignty so you know they they trick them into all of this licentious behavior all of this, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll, dancing in the dirt, fornicating in the mud, etc., to, uh, you know, to give you the illusion that that's, you know, the freedom that you want from society, not true freedom. Yeah, and again, it's it's free, it's it's like becoming, uh, it's like you know, the the word demon actually does fit. Um, you're you're becoming like a daemon. Uh, that's the same thing as person. Um, you know, you, you kind of wear your demon and you do the devil's work, you know, metaphorically again, um, by becoming a legal person. Um, because everything you do then is against nature, against your, your li you're living in artificial construct, a, an artificial womb, if you will. So, you know, if you just go on, 
Um, this also says, and I find this very important, um, Pastor John, you're, you're sojourning here in fear for as which, much. As, which passage are you reading? Uh, this is still 1 Peter 1, 17 through 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with cor corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain com conversation received by tradition from your fathers. See, we're all taught that, you know, we have our founding fathers and we have to follow the traditions of our founding fathers. And, and the, you know, this is all bullshit. This is our, this is our particular um, false history, our particular, you know, story that we pretend has anything to do with us. We follow a bunch of laws and stuff made by dead men, you know, and, and it's really, it's, it's quite ridiculous when you compare their writings to what's actually happening today. We, 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 in other words, we, we look at the founding fathers, for instance, on their face. We say, oh, those were great men because they created a constitution. Constitutions are a dime a dozen. We're the only country in the world that pays homage to its constitution. I mean, no other country says, oh, constitution, oh, oh. It's, it's like some, you know, idol worship of this piece of paper. When every country has one, it's a contract. It's a debt compact. It means you're taking on the debt of another. It, it is nothing. There's nothing special about a constitution. In fact, the Freemasons have been creating constitutions for for thousands, you know, hundreds, thousands of years. If you go back, you know, and if you follow those historical lines, constitution. The word constitution literally means a debt compact. It's not necessarily a good thing, right? And citizenship is a debt slavery, right? So a voluntarily debt slavery, debt servitude. Um, so the tradition of your forefathers, including their fabled genealogy, including all of the traditions and things that are, that become law, because tradition or custom is also another part of the law that we have, that we respect. Um, if things are done customarily, then the fact that they're against the law becomes sort of obtuse or, or pointless because it's custom, right? Um, James 2 1. I'm just going to breeze, breeze through these. Have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Romans 2 11. For there is no respect of persons with God. Job 32 21. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person. Neither let me give flattering titles to any man. Why do I respect the president, the pope, the judge, the mayor? Why do I respect all these flattering titles when, when here's the law saying don't respect fiction, don't allow it? Um, and you can't have a flattering title unless you first have a persona to, that the government can attach that, you know, because it's property. So the title has to go on the person, not the man. Um, uh, Philipp Philippians 4.11, not that I speak in respect of want, for I've learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Don't strive to be something you're not, in other words. Um, James 2, 9. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. So um, uh, Proverbs 28, 21. To have respect of persons is not good. For a, for a piece of bread, that man will transgress. And that's exactly what we have done. We have given up our entire blood right through attainder, through the birth process. We've lost all inheritable rights from our parents, from our bloodline, because we don't bear the arms of our parents. We bear the arms of the United States, which is defined as its flag and its seal. Those are the arms of the United States. You can look that up. Okay, so we have transgressed because we respect the persona that the United States has granted us, the status, the false citizenship, um, the false equality. Hebrews 12, 16, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. All right, he gave up his entire inheritance. For a, for, a, for a morsel of meat. This is, again, a parable, a story of how easy it is to lose your, lose your way, lose yourself, to stop being self-governing and self-responsible um, and continue the, 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 the history of your family as, a, as, as an immortal line of men, basically, through the blood. That's what it's talking about. That's the, the, the opposite of the legal realm, which is designed to take all that away from you. And, and basically take all property and make it public. 
uh, but them that are without, let God judges, therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. You see, all throughout the Bible it keeps saying person, 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 but you've never probably read it, if anybody that has read it really didn't understand, because how do you understand that unless you know what this means? In the, the in person the, is not the man, is not the woman. It's the uh, artifice. Yeah, I mean, even wool man, a man with a womb, there, there are no women in nature. That's a man-made concept. We're all men, right? I mean, the whole the whole feminist movement, all that stuff. You know, what's, what's ironic about that is that the only reason that, quote-unquote, women have equal rights is, one, you've called yourself a woman, which doesn't exist in nature. It's a legal term. And, two, you've accepted the rights of women, which often are no rights at all. Right? This, again, this is a mind fuck. This is a... a, a in, in nature, it's an inversion. All, all men are created equal in nature, but there's no women there. Women are a legal construct, and if you could teach women this, well, and, and you and I had talked about this a while ago. Man is the species, and that includes men and women in that species. It's like canine includes both female and male dogs. Right, but back the science with the spirituality. Man is a creation of God. Woman is not. Woman is a creation of man in his linguistic fashion. Just like the notion of language. Language is either feminine or masculine. What they're doing right now with all these personal pronouns and you know trans this and trans that is they're taking away the, even the power of language. You can't even use language now in a masculine way, every other, every foreign language, you know, has a masculine and a feminine and a neutral. You can't even use that anymore. You can't use masculinity or femininity in language. You have no language. You have no way to communicate any kind of authority or power if you cannot identify, if, if nihilism is taking over so much that you can't even identify the masculine, the masculinity of a word, the power of a word versus the femininity of the word, which is something subservient to the masculine. That has nothing to do with man or woman. It has everything to do with the concept of power and less power or subservience. That's it, right? But because we, we have called them and we have used that concept with men and women, the whole thing is getting confused. The language, the power of language is being taken away from us so that when we do make a claim, again, it's that figurative boot uh, being put on our face that says, no, you can't use that term. That term is masculine. That term is feminine. No, you must use something neutral, neutral, so that you have no power. That's the importance of language when used correctly. Right. So, again, we can go on. I mean, so I got... every, every chapter in the Bible has something on person, nor honor the person of the mighty. Don't respect the, the person or title of the poor, nor the person of the mighty. Um, you know, that's in Leviticus. Uh, but them, them that are without, let God judgeth, therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. That's 1 Corinthians. I could go on and on and on. Every chapter in the Bible is constantly telling you, you know, put away that vile person, do not. And then it goes to the notion of rendering to Caesar the things that are Caesar. In other words, give back to Caesar what he has allowed you to take upon yourself. All right. So um, if you take on the pers persona of Caesar, if you take on the money of Caesar, etc., give it back to Caesar. Yeah, and Caesar is a and, and this this isn't about uh, a passage about submission and and paying no, your no, your no, taxes. No. This is this is what the spinners use to claim, you know, uh, and, you know, and spin the whole story to take it out of context of natural law and personhood. Right. So um, if I'm rendering to Caesar what Caesar allowed, and and consider that the word Caesar just technically means the word district in modern. Uh, times the district is where everything is registered you know and kept and and the person is created right so so caesar is the district um the district of columbia in other words washington dc that 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 thing that was created um to to basically be a holding person 
or excuse me, a holding corporation for all persons, all, all public persons, all public creations, all public property, which the person, the status is. So when you're talking about rendering to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, give back the legal persona. It's, it's his, it's always been his. It's always been part of the district. It's never been your property. It's not your status. It's their status that they allow you to use, just like renting a car, right, or playing the Monopoly board. Relinquish the flattering titles, all the privileges, all the protections, all the securities, all the insurance, all of that requires a persona. Right? What is freedom but to have no insurance? What is freedom, true freedom, but to have no guarantees? Right? See, that's what people can imagine. That's the part that throws people and they they want us they're like, hey, no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna step out of the comfort of this artificial womb, this matrix. Hell no. I I'm, I'm happy that I have consumer protections and I'm happy that I have this and this. I don't want to live in pure charity and love. I want to be competitive. I want to be, you know, I want to follow the legal law. And that's of course very understandable because you're 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 giving up what what is the illusion of protection. What is it all based on? Money. Right? That's that's what it all comes back to. What is your what is what are you gonna get for your insurance? Money. What are you gonna what, money? It's just always money, right? Money is somehow going to save you. And and that's that's why the Bible says you can't have two gods. You either worship mammon, which is you know, the value of things, or you worship the pricelessness of nature, which is God. You can't have two masters, you can't have two gods. So yeah, this, this is where we're at. So, um, you know, again, this creates identity. We're all equal in our identity as public persons of the United States. In other words, we're all equally punishable under the law. <laughs> That's the true definition of equality. We're all equally punishable or sanctioned under the law. We have the right to be put in pain, taxed, licensed, extorted, exacted. We have the right to have biological weapons tested on us. We have these, these are rights that are right in the U.S. code. Go read the biological weapons program, which I put in my documentary, my vaccine documentary. It's right there, man. It says you have the right. You are considered as consenting to having biological weapons, you know, put upon you, tested for any reason whatsoever, medical, research, protection, uh, crowd control, riot control, you name it. Every reason is in there. It's your right because you've accepted the rights of the person, and therefore, since since you're surety for that person, and the Bible says if you're surety for another, you'll surely be put in pain for it. Again, what is your right to be put in pain? So, whatever the person, therefore, has the right uh, to to be you know harmed, so do you because you're the surety. So this is the problem with personhood. This is why throughout the Bible, although you've read it before, over and over, whatever, you've never read it with the correct understanding of the definitions of these words, right? <clears throat> you look in, the, in the, the first part of the U.S. Code, it defines a person, chapter one, section one, a person is an individual, a corporation, a uh, association, a you know, could be anything that's um, one or more persons, one or more individuals that get together and create an artificial person, which is a corporation. So, but nowhere does it say it's a man. You could write a whole book, literally, on <laughs> just the definitions of person that you find in law. I mean, it's incredible. It really yeah. is. Speaking so, of writing a whole book on this stuff, or two, or three. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that brings us back to good old, uh, uh, good old Sh Shlomo Sand, you know, the guy you interviewed or tried to interview. And he, you know, he, I mean, it was a fairly good interview. This was uh, several years ago, but he did spin the interview there towards the end, but... Um, you know, this one here, it's in the uh, archives on the Gnostic Media website, episode number 70 from March 2010. 
Well, here's what he says in his, his, his book is called The Invention of the Jewish People. And that's exactly what every people is. It's an invention. What is an invention? It's something that you patent. It's something that you create. And, right, I mean, the, do you think that the people just happened? Or did it just, did we come out of the womb as, as a people? I mean, that's a busy womb. Right, it's just it's none of it. None of it really makes sense when you when you when you think about it. And I did a I did a blog article. It's called "I am not the pe- I, when I said I am not the people and neither are you," because people, of course, is plural. So I can't be the people. The people is who sues me. Wait, wait a minute. How, am, I, am I the people? If the people are suing me, <laughs> right? Me, I, yeah. The, the people uh, of the United States of America versus. Right. So how, <laughs> how did you get the idea that you're the people? Well, of course, they propagandize just like just like everybody thinks arms is guns, right? They propagandize it. They they as long as the delusion that we are all free and equal, right? Nobody ever tells you what these words mean. For instance, I can I can ask anybody what freedom means, and I can get a thousand different answers. And all I got to do is say, well, why don't you look it up? And instead of guessing, why don't you remember, you're talking about a legal term here, right? Not natural freedom. Natural freedom means you're following the law of nature. Yeah, That's- I was just going to pull it up on uh, Blacks here if I can find a good copy of it. Maybe I should pull that off the screen. While well, I look. I'll give you a hint. Okay. When the slaves were emancipated, right, they were freed. They were given a United States citizenship under the 14th Amendment. In other words, they were enfranchised. Right. <laughs> freedom means, or free means in legal terms, it means you have a franchise. You're, you're, you're not free. You're, I mean, a rat in a cage is free. So is a citizen in a jurisdiction. Right, it's a it's a it's debt slavery, but it's called freedom. It's called a franchise. So you look up the word free, you get all kinds of different things, but it always says kind of the same thing. You're free as long you know under the law. You're free as long as you're following the law. You're 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 free as long as you're participating in commerce, allowing yourself to be taxed, uh, extorted from, etc. Okay, so. Freedom means franchise. When you put the word D-O-M on any word, kingdom, freedom, etc., it means dominion. Okay, so you have franchise under the dominion of some entity, some king, some identity, some fiction. Okay, that is what the word freedom means. We're known as a free government, a franchise government. That's what the word means. There's no getting around that because, again, you're talking about a legal system, and when you say a person is free, well, the person is property of government, first of all, so it can't be free. But you can say that a person is a franchise that I can use in commerce, a vessel, a commercial vessel, a ship uh, that I can sail on the sea of commerce, um, which Jesus walked over, by the way. Jesus didn't sink into the sea of commerce because he followed the natural law. Right? We need a ship to navigate, circumnavigate this commerce commercial thing, or we sink because we're not following the law. Again, there's the metaphor. Right? So, I mean, here, here's here's what what he said. Um, what, what Shlomo Sand said in the invention of the Jewish people. This is the the most, I think, adequate explanation I've ever heard of any type of identity politics, especially when it comes to the Jew, all right? We don't have to talk poorly or, any, you know, you just have to acknowledge what is going on with the invention of the Jewish people. Now, again, this is a, this is an Israeli, a Jewish source, not, not coming from me. He's a professor at the University of Tel Aviv. I've had him on the show. He is a Jewish scholar. He talks about this stuff openly. So relax, folks. Right, and that doesn't mean that he's not just as brainwashed. If I, you know, you might be offended that I say Americanism or American exceptionalism is complete bullshit, right? Because you've been raised to to actually believe that, right? Um, here's he, so he he still is going to have some of that conditioning, you know, that, that you grow up, you grow up. To hate you grow up it, the whole society is diaspora based meaning you're an outsider you're xenophobic you hate every other freaking race and every other freaking nation right 
the, co the construction of a new body of knowledge always bears direct connection to the ideology in which it operates. Historical insights that diverge from the narrative laid down at the inception of the nation uh, can, can be accepted only when consternation about their implications is abated. And here's, here's where it's like, oh, this is the Jewish thing right here. This can happen when the current collective identity begins to be taken for granted and ceases to be something that anxiously and nostalgically clings to a myth mythical past, when identity becomes the basis for living and not its purpose, that is when history, historiographic change can take place. Histori a historiographer is a, hist a writer of history. So hist historical writing or the notion of changing history can take place when identity becomes the foundation instead of the purpose. And, and what, what page is that from Shlomo's book? No, I didn't write the page on that one. I'm sorry. Oh, great. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, um, when, when, when the identity itself, so I am Jewish, I am American, I am English, I am Christian, I am whatever, Muslim. It doesn't matter because if you say, well, how, how, what makes you this thing that you say you are? Well, I was, I, I'm foundationally, that's what I am. Well, how do you prove that, right? Oh, well, I have a genealogy or I have a, a, a fable bloodline. I have this, I have that. Well, wait a minute. So you don't actually have to do anything? You don't have a purpose in life that says, because I am Christian, I must, my purpose in life is to follow the law of God or the, the you know, to follow Christ, the example. No, no, I'm, I'm just a Christian. <laughs> I don't got to do all that. I was born one. I don't, it's, a, it's a club, man. It's a it's a it's a pretend identity. I, I don't have to do anything to be it. All I got to do is go to church and pretend, right? I just I just call myself that. Well, this is this is the perfect explanation of the Jewish quote unquote people or the invention of this modern thing that's been used to foment, you know, world wars and everything else is this notion that Jewishness is a foundation as opposed to a purpose right there's right. There's, there's no i'm not doing anything to prove i'm jewish i'm not living any kind of life that means right no i'm just i'm, I'm a jew i was born here or my parents were that and it means absolutely nothing what, what they're doing is they're focusing on the persona rather than living as men Right, it's just a name. What is a name? A person, place, or thing? Right. That so, so they're putting on this, you know, it, it, you know. So, in fact, what you're saying is to go around labeling yourself a quote unquote Christian is the antithesis of what the Bible is saying to do. Absolutely, because it's always fun. You always say it's basically the Bible says, "Call yourself no thing, or, or don't call yourself something when you are no thing." Right? The closer you are to nature, the less legalism, the less titles, the less less flattery, the less um, personas and fakeness and f artificialness and technology. The, the, the closer you are to nature and its law, the less of that you will have until the point where you cross over and are, quote unquote, again, allegorically born again into your innocence. And all that means, born again, is born again back into to become childlike again, to become like you were when you were born into the world, innocent, without name, without um, anything that could actually affect you. No contracts can affect you while you're part, uh, while you're a child, right? You, you accept those later. You confirm and ratify the contract. Um, when you're 18, you say, okay, by continuing to use the name, the title, and everything, the social security number, you know, right? I'm confirming what already existed. I'm making what was avoidable um, unavoidable by continuing to, to, in adultery, legalized adultery or adulthood, I'm continuing to act in persona in this false identity. And therefore, everything that happened when I was a kid is now technically legalized or confirmed or ratified is the correct term. So, yeah, that's what it's saying is this is, this is the this is the notion of identity um, 
you know, I have some. <laughs> it's basically when you're living in natural law and not putting on these false titles, these let's just call them pseudonyms, you know, or uh, gnome de plumes uh, for the sake of, of ease. If you don't put all of these things on, then what you're doing is you're speaking as men purely in, you know, just in, in context of, of being men. And then we put things in the commons. We can verify them as men and equals. And that includes what we call women today, not to exclude any group. Well, and, and that's just it. You know, you've got to remember one very important thing, and that is the most important thing in the Bible is to not follow any other doctrine, meaning law. If I use any other thing, person, place, or thing, that is a fictional creation of man, any jurisdiction, any nation, any country, any state, any persona, any flattering title, um, all the protections, all the benefits, everything that comes with these things, you got to remember that the second that you accept those benefits and that persona, that artificial identity, you've accepted the entirety of the law that is behind that, which they would call the law of persons, for instance, the law of nations, the law of of fiction right you've you've accepted a fictional identity that belongs to another you're surety for it and therefore you will be put in pain for it that is just a reasonable purely logical conclusion that they're like you know follow no other doctrine or you'll you'll suffer and that's exactly again that's what's happened to us. We've we've lost the ability to self-govern the knowledge to self-govern has been hidden um, in in esoteric writings and the, the, the words of the Bible have been uh, rewritten to the point where they're, you know, you try to read it in English, you just can't, you, unless you're looking up every word. You know, you, you can't just read this thing in, in your ordinary uh, dog Latin, as they call it. You, you have to go back. And, and people ask me all the time, which Bible, which Bible do you use? Now, I always say the King James Version because simple. It's copyrighted common law of the crown. The common law of England transferred over to the common law of, um, of, Amer of, the, Amer of the states, not the United States. The United States has no common law. Okay? The United States is a district. The United States is Caesar. It's a military you know, sovereign, basically. So that's what we're under. But the common law amongst the, the rest of the private people of the states who are in union to protect each other, that then is the is still the English common law, um, which of course includes the Bible. Um, and so again, the Bible is copyrighted. The concordances go with the King James version. Now, if you read another version, any of the oh, hundreds of versions that are out there, it I won't say it doesn't matter. What I will say is that if you go to the concordances and the lexicons. I don't care how they translated the Bible, you can always figure out the intent of what it what it what, what it was in the Greek and the Chaldean and the Hebrew in the in the Latin because because you're going back, you're saying, Well, this is completely rewritten in this version. What did it mean back here? What what did it mean when it, before it was translated? Right. Well, and you you know there is the issue of the different uh, codices that were used, you know, like uh, Alexandrinus, etc., where they actually took out some of these things, and then they you know it appears that you know in the late seventeen early eighteen hundreds they planted these copies so that they could create the NIV and all of well, these different versions. Yeah, and that's important. Um, it's important to note, though, that because because the system itself, even the Queen was quoted as, as saying, I'll paraphrase, she, even the Queen has said, I know that I am Queen. This is this is a voluntary, uh, how did she say it? Hey. Um, she said something, <laughs> she said something about uh, something about her position being on the you know a voluntary thing in other words she she only exists because the people allow her to exist she, they recognize this and what's important to know is however you look at the bible 
Um, you must look at it as, first of all, again, it's copyrighted law. Second of all, that they have to give you as a volunteer, and volunteerism and legalism means the doctrine of master and servant. If you're volunteering to be a servant, a subject, a voluntary slave, well then, you have to be aware of and be given and, and have published full knowledge of the law. And what does the law <laughs> say? The law says, take no other law but this. And what do we do? Again, we put our hand on the Bible, we blaspheme, yeah. we take both to the, to the state, right? Well, you know, and, and for those of you who don't get it, this is the law book. That's the manual that she, this is a King James version. This one's actually a, a waterproof Bible. You can actually write in this one and wash it off and it, it just washes like the pages are clean and you can start over. It's pretty cool. But, um, oh, and I also wanted to mention thanks to those in the audience who donated. So we've gone into all of this, Clint. You know, we're almost at an hour here. How does this tie in? And, and you've touched on a little bit, but how does this tie into what is a Jew? Well, we, we obviously, again, a Jew does not exist in nature any more than a Christian does. Okay. It, even in the Bible, if you look up the word Christian in the Bible, you'll find it from what I remember about three different places in the Bible. Under no circumstances does the Bible say to take a flattering title of Christianity, right? When the word Christian is used, it was used very derogatorily towards, towards a certain group of people who were pretenders, who, again, like most Christians today, you know, they don a suit, they go into a, a building where, of course, the Bible says that God's house is not built by the hands of men, right? God's, God's house is nature, you know? You, you, if I want to worship, I go out. I go out into nature and I commune with God. I don't go to a, 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 a stained glass, you know, building built by hands. It just when the Bible says not to, the Bible says all these things are wrong. Right. Well, and the, and the Bible also states clearly that church is whenever two or more come together and have a discussion about truth and natural law under God. Right. And so, you know, you basically could say that the preacher is a simulation of, of Christ or a simulation of a prophet or whatever, and that you're participating in something false. And, of course, every church out there, because so you got to realize that churches are corporations, too. The fact that they're corporations means they're bound by the law, the legal law. They're not bound in any way by the Bible law. And they support the law of the land, which is the Constitution, and they support the legalism, and they, they you know... Somebody but, somebody just asked if they're at church now. That would be a, an affirmative. <laughs> <laughs> You're in Red Pill Sunday School, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Check yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. Check yourself, right? Um I, so, yeah, and, and it all goes back to being your real self. It, 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 I, this is the thing, you know, it's just about being yourself, your true self. It's nothing else. Keep it real. Just, being just your be true real. self and being true to yourself. Right, because everything else is just an excuse, and there are no excuses before God. Just like there's no excuses before a judge not to follow the legal law, there's no excuses before the the, the God, however you want to define that, um, Jehovah, right, nature itself, there's no excuses to break with the law of nature. <laughs> if you go off the edge of the, if you slip off the edge of the cliff, you're going to fall and break your neck and you're going to be dead. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, fear, you've, fear. you've broken God's law. That's the end of that oh, one. <laughs> so in this, in this book, which uh, we, we were both sent, you know, you have it there too. You could probably show it better. Um, Jewish Eugenics by John Glad. I recommend everybody get this book. All right, uh, eugenics, human ecology, has always understood well, thanks, itself. As thanks, Camille. Human rights, those of future generations, rejecting absolutely all taboos. John Glad here lays out the eugenic thrust of traditional Jewish culture and shows how Zionism itself was conceived as a grand eugenic plan. Glad uh, documents Jewish eugenicists' tormented search for the meaning of life. Explains how the entire eugenics movement was temporarily driven underground by a group that resents a tiny minority 
even within the Jewish community, and describes how eugenics has redeemed triumph in both the diaspora and in Israel, now referring to itself as genetic counseling rather than the formal former eugenic counseling. What he concludes, uh, since we don't have time to go through the whole thing, I just did a whole two-hour show on this, my last, you know, uh, on, on UCY there, on, on, on YouTube, Red, Red Pill Sunday School. Um, his, his chapter is, are, are Jews, ah, where is it? Are Jews Jew? Are Jews Jews, right? What is a Jew? And he goes through, I'm just going to read what his conclusions are and, and what through history how the definition has changed uh, to the point where there is no more longer a definition. Um, first, it was Jews, the traditional Jews equals Judaism equals matrilineal descent, descent by the mother again, right? Then, well, wait a minute. No, I, you know, all, all the Jews, different forms of Jews, then, and 85% of Jews are atheists. And, right, well, no, no, no. So Jews equals Judaism plus the, Plus, you can also have mater, uh, matrilineal descent because most Jews don't adhere to Judaism, right? Most most Jews don't adhere to the Torah. They they the Talmud is their civil law, and and let me explain that just like the Bible is supposed to be the spiritual overlord of our civil law, the uh, ta the, the the Torah the, is supposed to be the spiritual law over the Talmud. For these guys, right? So any civil law you have, you also have the spiritual, uh, uh, not equivalent, but, right? So you separate, of course, the church and the state, and therefore you can commit all kinds of crimes in the state and uh, have them forgiven by the church. Um, so that wasn't good enough for, for, for everybody because everybody's, you know, there is no real definition of a Jew. Jews equals Judaism. Oh, no. Then it was Jews does not equal Judaism. Then it was Jews equals Judaism plus something else. Then Jews equals matrilineal descent, which equals race. Oh, well, now we're a race. But everybody knows it's not a race because, you know, you have blonde-haired, blue-eyed ones. You have black ones. You have... Uh, you know, everybody's a Jew that, that says they're a Jew, so well, that can't be. Uh, then it was Jews equals matrilineal uh, descent plus patrilineal descent, which means that everybody's a Jew, essentially, because that's that's now the line of the father and the mother. <laughs> uh, then it was Jews equals matrilineal descent, patrilineal descent plus Judaism, but that, you know, it can't, that can't be, because, again, some Jews don't have, can't show, you know, it just goes on and on. Modern Jews do not equal ancient Jews was the next one. So here we arrive at the most important part. Well, what is that? What's that line in, uh, what is it, uh, Revelation 3? Oh, come on. Revelation 3, uh, 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. But do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. So you're talking about the synagogue, that, that notion, that synagogue of Satan. Again, 85% atheism. Um, then you have all the, the, the split groups, the traditionalists, the orthodox, etc., 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 the Chabad ultra orthodox right you have so many different groups there's no there's no meaning in the word and that's why they say the modern jews are not the ancient jews um and, and he points to he, he points to the notion of the human genome you know that that even if even if the jews had i think your dog is eating a pillow or something behind you hey yo you, it's a new dog, so <laughs> I lost my, my Great Dane. We had to put him to sleep because he's thirteen and a half. So that's a that's a big and old Great Dane. They don't usually live half that long. No, no we took care of him. No vaccines. That's that's why, um, in my opinion. But um, he goes on and he says, you know, he talks about how how you know the Canaanites uh, conquered the Jews and the Syria conquered Israel and Babylon you know, repeated the conquest and made them slaves. Uh, they, 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 there's no way that they could have, that the Jews, quote unquote, of that day, which whatever that even means, right, could have preserved their, 
their genealogical purity, even if they would have cloned themselves, he says, and only had like a 3% deviation from that intermarriage and that kind of stuff, it still would be, you know, like 97% of all Jews would not have anything to do with the, with those clones. Right. So it's, it's, it's an absolute fallacy to say the word Jew. It doesn't exist. It cannot exist because whatever was a Jew is breeded out. Slaves, for instance, all the women that were turned into slaves, do you think they had a choice between who their sexual partners were? Right? When you conquer a country, you turn them into slaves. So right. so what's happening is we have a, an identity. We have a, a, a diaspora, and the whole thing's built on, again, xenophobic sort of we're exclusive. If you've ever seen the movie Defamation, it shows how they take these beautiful, wonderful, innocent children, take them to all these death camps that they've created, um, and tell them stories about how everybody hates them. And so, right. the, yeah, I have um, seen that. You know, it's total nonsense. Even here, even here, he says that Jewishness cannot exist without the concept of diaspora. So again, it's a cultural identity based on something on a people that supposedly have always been right uh, uh, persecuted, or yeah, yeah, and that's their identity. And, and, their identity and, and, is hate. and the the odd, the, you know, the irony of that whole thing is, you know, when you think about it, is how often do the good people get kicked out of some place? You know, the ones that are going along and getting along with everybody and enjoying everything and contributing happily and healthfully to the whole situation. But yet we have this one group that identifies with this persona who's been kicked out of over 50 nations. And you have to ask yourself, you know, are the good guys kicked out of 50 nations? Well, you know, think about that logically for even half a second. It makes no sense, the official story. Yeah, and, the, and of course, the, the, the whole thing is to is to destroy you know it's counterculture again that's um you dude you might want to send that dog out. i mean you got trouble going on there <laughs> yeah come on little brat maybe he's a jew um, <laughs> so then it goes on well let's say jews are a race no they're not a race because that that's then it's not a religion uh modern jews are not equal to ancient jews again then it goes to jews does not equal race and does not equal Judaism, but equals a question mark. Uh, so Jews equals question mark, right? Um, then uh, Ben Gurion, the, the first uh, prime minister, right? He's actually quoted as saying, "Well, fuck, I don't know. I don't know what a Jew is." He actually said, "A Jew is any quote anyone who says he is." Anyone who says he is and wants a free check from Germany, essentially. Right. She, 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 then, there, then there was a problem. Some African tribes desiring to immigrate <laughs> took him at his word and declared themselves to be Jewish. <laughs> so, so imagine a bunch of eugenicists, right? A, a bunch of people who who reach out and, and recruit people because of their high IQ, their high intelligence, right? And all of a sudden you got all these Ethiopians saying, well, we're Jewish. <laughs> Fuck, let us in. And unfortunately, though, that's you know, if you're not familiar with the story of the the vaccines, right? So anyone from Africa, anyone that was claiming to be a Jewish Ethiopian um, were given the Deprovo vaccine. So in order to come to Israel, you had to sterilize yourself. You couldn't have children if you were a black Jew. So obviously anyone who says he is yeah, causes a few problems for for eugenicists, right? <laughs> so, uh, so then then they're creating, you know, they start creating Jewish self hatred and all this shit. Um, then Jewish is so. Here's where it gets interesting. It says, well, <laughs> the Jews are the are not the invention of the anti semite, and Jews are the invention of the anti semite. Right. So now we have sort of a paradox. Well, I mean, if you have a, a group that calls themselves the chosen people over everyone else, isn't that the beginning of racism right there? Well, sure. But if you think about it, if I both am and am not the invention of the anti-Semite, what that really means is that I cannot exist without opposition. <laughs> I, I, I have to create the anti-Semite. The anti-Semite has to create me. 
it, I can't exist. We're, we're mutually exclusive, right? We're, 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 we, we have to have an enemy in order. So, so again, the identity politics of a Jew is hatred. It's diaspora. It is everybody against me. And you see that in their pol politics. You see that, again, in these poor innocent kids who were brainwashed into this, this stuff. Right, so finally, in in the end of this particular little chapter, and I, again, I highly recommend this book because holy crap, this explains the whole thing. Here's the 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 final and and obvious truth is that Jews equals members of a cultural and breeding alliance. So now, Jan, when I Members Hold that cultural, that's that sums it up. Cultural and breeding alliance. Cultural Got it. and breeding alliance. And he talks about endogamy. Endogamy is is when you marry for social class, for you know nothing nothing um, of of nature, nothing of the blood, but of the class, right? And so you look, and you're like, well, wait a minute. You know, I, when I was in Philadelphia, I saw George Bush was the Jew of the month, right? He was like the celebrated Jew in the cultural Jewish history. Uh, exhibit uh and i'm like wait a minute so he's a jew wait a minute, wait a minute. um you look at the genealogy of the president and again what is a white person right it's a it's the same thing it's a it's members of a cultural and breeding alliance right what is the queen of england and all of her cousins and all the royalty um they are members of a cultural and breeding fucking alliance this is why you're like well, wait a minute if all the CEOs of, of corporations, we say the media is owned by Jews, right? We say this, that, that. We see the actors in Hollywood, most of them are Jewish. They have horrible, horrible Jewish names that they've replaced with American names. We have the vice presidents, the presidents, the governors, all related by 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 marriage, by blood, right? By, by marriage. So what do we have controlling us? Do we say we have a bunch of Jews? and we blame the Jew, this, this word that doesn't really mean anything? Or can we actually say that we have members of a cultural and breeding alliance that have taken power and have controlled it by keeping it in the quote-unquote, if you will, family, right? Family, family does not carry the connotation of, of just blood. Family, family can be a nation, family can be a household, family can be whatever. So keeping it in the quote unquote family, um, you know, suddenly, suddenly you understand, you know, genetics, eugenics are the same thing, right? Genetics, the, the, basically all the eugenicists became geneticists. And as it said in the beginning, or it said on the back, how eugenics has reemerged triumphant, both in the diaspora and in Israel, now referring to itself as genetic counseling rather than the former eugenic counseling. So what we have, Jan, quite simply, is members of a cultural and breeding alliance. That was the last conclusion that that he came to. That That's the... You know, I don't know what to say, but it's right here in this in this brilliantly put together book. It goes through the whole history of how it is exactly that a, a cultural and breeding alliance. And remember, you know, I'm not impressed by IQ. IQ again is intelligence. It's not knowledge. Anybody can, you know, a lot of people can have high intelligence. You can have a lot of intelligence. But I think what they're actually looking at, why does the CIA hire for IQ? Why does the, these these horrible groups hire and corporations hire high IQ? Because you, you've got you know, less empathy, perhaps. You're more psychopathic. you way too smart for your own good. I don't know, however you want to describe it. Or members of a culture of reading alliance. Right. <laughs> right. And if everybody is in the club, then they'll all... Uh commit the same psychopathic behavior without uh, so what does this mean? quandary it means that we're respecting the title the flattering title the person of the jew we're fearing the jew we're giving it legitimacy by calling it a jew when we know damn well there is no such thing i mean as a Jew, it's it's a it's 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 there is no ancient jew that is a modern there's none of it is 
uh, uh, natural or real. None of it has an actual qualification of blood of of reality. It's just what did what did what did the prime minister say? Anyone who says he is is a Jew. Well, see, the problem is not the Jews, is what I'm trying to say. The problem is us. The problem is that we have, for centuries and centuries, given these people the titles of royalty, of president, of, you know, king, of pope. They're all freaking related by marriage. This is the, the thing about genealogy I couldn't figure out. Why, is, why are all these evil, twisted fucks in power all related. <laughs> now I understand. It's a cultural breeding alliance. It's eugenics. It, it right. makes perfect sense all of a sudden. So I no longer. I'm not going to call you a Jew, just like I'm not going to call you a Christian. Either act the part, or stop pretending. You know, I just I can't respect. I'm doing what the Bible says. I'm not respecting flattering titles anymore. All right, so uh, let's see. Anything else we want to add to the show before we wrap it up? I don't think so. You know, I, I was gonna, I was gonna just clarify because I know people have a a bizarre need for this not to be true in their heads. But um, I was gonna read the notion of. <laughs> I it cracks me up. Uh, white person, you know what is a what is a white person? <laughs> Um, because again, I said I said Barack Obama is actually a white person, right? For instance, the act of, of Fe February twenty seventh, eighteen sixty eight, uh, uh, replacing the code of eighteen forty nine, provided that quote every person having one fourth or mo more Negro blood shall be deemed a colored person. Okay, that's Black's Law Dictionary. Uh, that's the definition for color. So we know that color has to do with what? Blood. Right? Every person having one-fourth or more Negro blood shall be deemed a color person. Well, gosh, what if I'm uh, pale as pale can be, but I happen to have one-fourth, um, you know, <laughs> one-fourth Negro blood? Well, then I don't qualify as a, as a, as a white person. All right, I don't I don't qualify to be in the um, the club, the eugenics club. Basically, I, I <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a. So here here's here's where it's important because you know you look at you look at Obama, uh, Obama Barack Obama is a false name, of course, is William the Conqueror's twenty second great grandson, King Henry the uh, V, uh, first cousin, nineteen times removed, so King King Henry the Eighth, first cousin, 16, 16 times removed, Anne Boleyn, right, President James Madison's third cousin, Abraham Lincoln's seventh cousin, President Thomas Jefferson's tenth cousin, tenth cousin, Elvis Presley, Sarah Palin, Joseph Smith, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. All people in power or with power. Um, you go to find a white person. Why was Barack Obama president? Well, obviously he's got the blood. So, um, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, so here's what it says in Black's Fourth. It says, members of the white Caucasian race as distinct from the black, red, yellow, and brown races. But uh, here's where it gets important. Whether applicant for United States citizenship is a quote-unquote white person, just like woman, white person is purely a legal term. To be a white person eligible for citizenship under statute enumerating classes of people, eligible therefore depends not upon ethnological classification of group to which he belongs, but upon whether members of such group with characteristics existing in 1970 when the statute was first enacted by Congress to be classified as white persons. Okay, again, status, white status, not white man, but white status. Uh, in the legislation of the slave period, persons without admixture of color blood, whatever the actual complexion might be, again, 
complexion does not matter. The fact that Barack Obama appears to be a black man, he's a white person, whatever his skin color tells you, he is a white person according to law. Why? Because he's, of course, William the Conqueror's 22nd great-grandson. What can I tell you? Right? So white persons... Um, Ta -ta 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 -ta. It excludes the African race when pure, but it is not easy to say what shade of color or mixture of blood will make a white person. So anybody that's going to tell me that the United States is also not eugenically based is, is a fool, right? Because we have this notion of white person. White person is what it takes to be... Um, a, a, a specific class of citizen in the United States to, have, to be a landholder, for instance. Um, again, it says it does not include one nearer white than black or red. <laughs> These were the language of, of old. In the legislation of the slave period, uh, a person without admixture of colored blood, whatever the actual complexion might be, that was actually how it was written. So a mix, a person without admixture of colored blood, whatever the actual complexion might be. I don't care if you're pink and purple polka dots, you can still be a white person as long as your blood eugenically can be shown to be, you know, you want to say Jewish or white? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure the, the difference at this point. So that's where we stand, man. We stand, we stand as subjects to... Some of us qualify to be parked. I know you, you've got the family line, right? I mean, you could technically... Whatever that means. Yeah, you could technically say, I am I am this and I want to I want to gain the artifice of uh, rights that come with being a white person. I'm related to... I can show my genealogy and my fabled history and therefore I am this. But this, of course, is against the natural law because... Right. All men are created equal under God. And that is, again, where <clears throat> where we start seeing everything break down. And of course, I mean, let's face it, really, what we have are a bunch of kids in the, in the White House, a bunch of congressmen who are there because of their blood. They are not qualified to be there. They're organized criminals raised by other organized criminals who've been in the business of stealing all of our inheritance, of stealing all of our blood, all of our properties that might have been in our families. They're, they've escheated them, and that's where we stand, man. We are a conquered people. The word conquer actually carries the same meaning as the word purchased. We've been paid off. We've been bought as a people. We've been given artificial things, monies, credits, benefits all these things uh, it, 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 and meanwhile everything has been stolen from under under us uh, our family inheritance has been taken because our blood is no longer recognized the whole purpose of citizenship is to taint legally artificially metaphorically taint the blood so that the law no rec longer recognizes you as one of the private people that's, 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 this is why, you know, your family, you know, doesn't have anything to give to you. They have to have a will to pass anything to you. Right. It's all been stolen out from under us. Right. All right, Clint. Um, maybe get you on again uh, next week with Bill Jocelyn, if possible. I'd like to have you two on together if, if we can get that going. Yeah, it'd be fun. All right, I'll coordinate with that with Bill uh, this week, and uh, hopefully we'll make that happen for next Tuesday. Great having you back. It's always good to talk to you, and uh, I guess that's a wrap for tonight, and we'll talk to you all next week. Thanks, everybody, who supported the show. Support Clint. Clint's website is uh, Strawman story.info and uh his reality blogger website is uh up there as well i guess you have that spelled wrong but uh, i just showed it up there people can pause it and check the address and pull it up thanks so much clint see you next week thanks everybody see you all next week and uh, i appreciate everybody's participation watch out for the jews ah. <laughs> 
Good night.